So here I am at work and uh, as promised I'm going to try to do some benchmarks on the new laptop here and I'm actually using my new my new cell phone camera and uh, this is on the HTC One just kind of wanted to see how good the video was on it so this is a, an experiment on many ends so uh, first thing I'm going to do is do two separate Geekbench uh, scores and uh, on the first one I'm going to do a 32-bit Geekbench score, and then I'm going to do a 64-bit Geekbench score, and then I'm going to run the uh, Street Fighter benchmark that I was telling you guys about. So, should be quick and painless. So let's get going. It takes about a minute, and uh, I ran them earlier, but I wanted to run them for you guys just so you could get some confirmation just on how everything was running and how everything was looking. That I wasn't making up the scores just to impress whoever he is out there. But uh, they were pretty good. They were okay. Um, they weren't mind blowing. They weren't that much better than Trinity. Uh, but they were they were pretty good. I wasn't disappointed. It was pretty much what I expected. Um, I expect to get a big boost in performance once I upgrade to the 16 gigabytes of DDR3. And I'm probably I don't know what I'm gonna do. Should I go for the 1866 or the 2133? Uh, 16 gigabytes it does make a huge difference with APUs I can't stress that enough if you've got an APU you need fast memory and you need a lot of memory um, the more and the better and the faster you get the much better your APU is gonna run I mean it just makes a huge difference with these a new AMD processors uh, just the type of memory that you got so I expect it to jump up a lot once I get that and um, yeah, I expect a, a huge performance boost out of it. Um, once again, I'm going to try to do a Battlefield um, benchmark a little bit later. But like I said, I'm running Battlefield off, off a DVD and it takes like five hours to download all the updates and all that kind of junk on it. So I just kind of don't feel like doing that right now. I'm actually at work and I'm supposed to be doing work right now. So uh, this is kind of a... Uh, side adventure that I'm doing while I'm here. It's 4th of July and I'm bored and I'm the only one here today. I work in television so there has to be somebody watching TV for the people who watch TV. So yep, that's my lot for today. Hopefully I can get some barbecue but unfortunately where I live it's raining. So here you got the first scores. These are the 32 bit scores. Let me zoom in a little bit there. Get a little sharper. So yeah, it's uh, 4709 you know pretty much what you would expect um, I've got the laptop in high perform performance mode so it's not being throttled it's it's using all of its turbo boost and all that kind of stuff so um, yeah so that's the first score let me run it again and I'm gonna do it in 64 bit this time and hopefully I can find some way to keep you entertained while these benchmarks are running so yeah why didn't I run any other benchmarks um, you know the future mark and all that other kind of stuff I don't know I don't think they uh, know what to do with APUs yet um, I think a lot of your benchmarks out there are really still favored towards Nvidia and Intel I don't think they're really fair so this is just Geekbench is just a pure CPU score and what I'm gonna give you later with the Street Fighter is gonna be a pure not a pure but you know a combined GPU CPU score um, and I think it'll give you a pretty good gauge. Uh, Street Fighter is not the most intensive game out there. Um, but, I mean, you know, it's got some pretty good graphics and it's reasonably 3D and there's a lot of movement. It's 60, it's got to run at 60 frames per second. So, it's, uh, I think it's a good level of what this computer can really do. Um, I know there's certain graphic cards out there that, you know, can't run a, a Street Fighter 4. So. And Street Fighter 4 is what I play. If you go to my channel, that's what I play. Um, I'm almost exclusively a Street Fighter 4 and Halo guy. Um, I do play Battlefield sometimes when I get bored with the other games. And So here's the second score, and it's actually a little higher than when I did it the first time. So here's our detail. This is 64, uh, 64.17. Um, I mean, that's pretty much right in line. That's right in line with like a, a Core 2 Quad. Okay, this is basically a Core 2 Quad score from five years ago. Um, what can you say? I mean, you know, this is a $100 processor. 
um, that AMD has in here. But you don't really buy this processor for the processing power. Okay, if you want processing power, yeah, go buy a 7 But you buy this for the combined power of the CPU and GPU. And the GPU in this processor is re really makes it shine and makes um, this a really efficient and good platform for people who want to do gaming um, but want everything on one chip. So this is the Street Fighter uh, coming up here. You just got a little glimpse of me in the black screen. And I mean, it's running pretty smooth. As you can see, this is an NVIDIA optimized game for PC. Signing in here. Boom, boom, come on, let's go. Okay, all right, come on. Super Street Fighter 4. That's it. All right, so let's go ahead and go to this benchmark. And it's playing in 1080p. Uh, let me go ahead and crank up all the settings just so you can get a real picture for what the settings are like. Uh, let's crank them up. Um, let's turn the anti-aliasing off. There we go. Let's put some shadow on there. A little motion, motion blur. Let's turn the particles up. Um, and no extra effects. Oh uh, yeah, let's leave that there. And fixed frame rate, desync. Let's turn the desync off. Let's see what that does. All right, that should work. All right, gonna go down to the benchmark. those high settings. I probably wouldn't play this at 1080p. I probably play it at 720. Even on my main rig, I play it at 720. So it got to be. And the average frame rate was 47 frames per second. Obviously, that's, you know, you need smooth frames for Street Fighter. So I would have to turn down the graphics a little bit. But it's playable. And that's what you want to see, right? You want to see if you can play some games on this thing. And the answer is yes. Um, can you play them at 1080? Uh, probably not. Uh, can you play them at 720? You can probably play anything you want at 720. Um, maybe I'll go to the store and get some other games and, and test them out too. I don't even have a Call of Duty game. Maybe I should get a Call of Duty game and test that out and give you some more benchmarks. But that's what we got for now. Uh, anything else? Oh yeah, I want to show you the flex on this keyboard. It's kind of... Maybe you can't see it from here. Let me show you it from this angle. Uh, Ah, uh, there it is. It's kind of flexy. You can't tell too, too much from the video. I've already got a little grease on my keyboard already. But, uh, hmm, what else? I want to show you a thickness comparison. Okay, so you see, the thickness of this thing is kind of an optical illusion. They they tapered everything in a way that made it seem thinner than it is. I don't, I don't mind that. To me, that's the sign of a good design. Uh, so... Let's see, give you a good reference. A battery, double A battery. The double A battery is about half as thick as this computer is, okay? Uh, what else, what else did I miss? Did I miss anything else? Mm, nope. I think this gives you a good picture of what the, the screen looks like too. Um, the colors are pretty sharp and even when it goes to black, I mean, you don't see very much uh, kind of uneven light on the screen so maybe the screen is a little bit better than I thought oh yeah if you're already run, running Windows 8 you have to use a um, a Hotmail account because when I logged into my Hotmail account from my other Windows 8 machine it actually automatically updated every setting that I had made from that computer onto this one I mean that was like the coolest thing I didn't have to make any adjustments because it just took all my settings from my desktop and put them on my laptop even like my my backgrounds and stuff like that and all the color choices that I made so 
you should probably if you have another Windows 8 computer or you're thinking about buying another Windows 8 computer definitely use your Hotmail account to link everything together I mean that was like I couldn't believe it, it was the coolest thing I'd ever seen so thumbs up to uh, Microsoft for doing that uh, what else what else what else did I notice from last night mm. oh yeah when you rub your finger up against this this metal thing it kind of does this weird vibrating thing I don't, I don't, it, it's not that, it's not a big deal, but it was kind of weird when I first noticed it. Uh, yeah. And the fingerprint reader has this cool LED on it. I didn't notice that at first, but when I started using the finger, and the fingerprint software that HP gives you is actually pretty good. Um, so it's not pure bloatware, um, what they give you with this machine. So, a few more tips, maybe as I do some more videos, I'll think of some more. But this is all I got right now. Take a, take a good refreshing july 4th even though i don't get to enjoy it uh no barbecue here in atlanta because there's rain everywhere so maybe you can send me some barbecue for doing this video peace